Okay, great. Um, yeah, so this is like our fifth town hall now. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll just get get uh, get to the action items, I suppose, of the agenda. Um, the updates. Uh, so we had uh, we were doing a bit of work last week on on the handbook, and uh, we've uh, had the first first draft of uh, why uh, Algebra is needed and what Algebra is. Um, so we've been sort of working collaboratively on that. Um, I guess that it'll. Uh, it'll uh, start becoming uh, more and more uh, full with uh, details and information uh, in the coming weeks. So we've made progress on the first two points, I suppose, um, and uh, we'll, we'll keep making progress on, on the handbook there. Actually, the second item, so I actually, um, I actually booked an appointment with the group, um, the Sleek group. I think they usually prefer like a, a conversation with the people who is setting up the uh, company. So um, I have that booked in for tomorrow. There is a couple of things that you register and then you need to like fill in some paperwork. So um, they suggest having a call first uh, so they can sort of guide you through it. Um, so I have, I took that call um, for tomorrow. Um, so, it was, uh, so um, you know, we initially thought um, Keaton would be able to take that action item, but uh, it seemed that he was a bit more busy with the offboarding uh, on, on his side. So. Uh, I just decided to take that on. Um, so I, I should have the chat tomorrow and let you know how that goes. Um, then we obviously had the talk with uh, with Trent last week, which is amazing, um, very insightful. Um, so I think we had like almost 25-ish people uh, last week uh, attend that session, uh, which was great, I thought. Um, um, and you, you were mentioning about like... Um, posting and, and tagging kernel did you get a chance to do that no oh, i forgot mm. well I, I left it too late and then i was like twitter it takes a while for people to see the post so yeah uh, it takes a while for it to, like to move up their up their feed i suppose and so mm. i just i didn't in the end i see uh, yeah. yeah but yeah okay. we still got some people from kernel like i still posted in the channel i, I created yeah. a junto for it and also like i posted in the general channel so i think we got quite a a few people from Colonel. Um, Great. Maybe we should thank them then all the same. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that'd be a good idea. Um and like it doesn't really matter if the session happened last week, we could still reach out and say that um, you know Colonel enabled us to like put it together, which would be great. Um, you know, to uh, get a bit of um sort of um PR for for Colonel as well. I think it's they're a great organization. So we should definitely um you know, promote what they're doing. Um, yeah, I'll do that. Um, and maybe we can even like um, like do it from the Algovera account, uh, Twitter account. Exactly. Um, then we also had the hacking session last uh, week. I wasn't able to attend. I still have to get around watching the uh, recording of it. Um, how did that go? Um, yeah, it went. Uh, I watched it back as I always have to because I'm never sure how it went. Um, yeah. It felt dense and i've got yeah. feedback from uh, from jacob and victor that some more digestible information would be useful okay so like for example i guess people go through the, the notebook by themselves after if they had some sort of like blog or something to accompany that i think that would mm. be really useful and i think they're really good ideas and um, just that we're like overloaded i suppose with other stuff yeah. so um but yeah apart from that went really well we covered a lot of grounds um and so there's a few different things. So the first thing we did was convert the, the training of the, the, the generative model into like a Python file and just run it like through an editor. And then the second step was to change the format of that to work with computer data, basically. So that's still a bit of a work in progress. Um, it's very, very close. If I had a couple more errors on Thursday, I think I would have got there. But uh, there's other, like we, we, we talked about Docker a bit as well. And so we ran the code through a Docker container. So we like pulled a basic PyTorch Docker image. Um, but we're going to need our own custom Docker files. And so um, like I talked a little bit about how we would define those. And we're probably going to need to set up our own Docker hub. So Docker hub is like GitHub for Docker images. And so I set up an Algovera account 
turned it into an organization. I actually had to set up my own Docker, like uh, for, for me personally, a Docker Hub yeah. uh, profile. And, and the idea would be that we would put Docker images there that are useful for running our examples. And so people could just, you know, do Docker pull, and then they could, in the, in the metadata for the algorithm when they're publishing it, they could just define algovera forward slash generative art for their like Docker image or whatever. And then that would run with that algorithm. Um, and so, yeah, that's in progress, just like setting all that sort of stuff up took, took quite a while. So, and you can see that there's quite a few different elements that we're talking about here now. So I think it was probably one of the most dense uh, hacking sessions yet. And that's yeah. probably why people were starting to ask about, you know, more yeah. digestible uh, information from us. But yeah, I think it went well. Is it more so that like um, there was need for like an accompanying um, sort of documentation of like what what uh, what we did rather than like it's being split up into maybe two two hacking sessions rather than one hacking session that would have helped? Is it more so that you, you needed information in a more condensed um, format, was it? Yeah, even that okay. would be great, yeah. So like, yeah, I said blog posts, but yeah, I guess I mean like accompanying instructions or just like a breakdown of what we're doing or something like that could be useful, yeah. Okay. Um, cool, yeah, I will we'll get to that in the good kind of pointies and the plans. Um, then hacking session. Um, so yeah, we've implemented source crowd. So that should be actually up uh, live now uh, for Discord. So it should, it should have scraped all the, the Discord data and uh, give a uh, cred to uh, the users uh, for like the the uh, information they provide in Discord. Now the there is a little bit of still work to be done because uh, it differentiates like the GitHub user and the Discord user as two separate people. Um, but obviously, like they're one person, right? So still need to figure out how how to how to do that. I think there is like you can set up um, aliases or something where like you have these two people as a one entity. Um, I think I'm not too sure about that, but again, that that will need to I'll need to do a bit more work on that. But it it's, it is actually up online now, so if you go to the link, it should it should show you the activities uh, on Discord. So that's that's good. Again, we can uh, relay that back to the community. Say it's up online. Um, so that that's, that happened last week, um, and then you also mentioned that you joined the core tech uh, team working group in Ocean Digital. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I went to the town hall for Ocean for the first time in a while, and they're talking about the core tech working group, which um, is basically talking about you know what's the what's the tech roadmap for Ocean and like what are the next integrations and all that sort of stuff. And so, like people talk a lot about Filecoin, for example. Um, like Shadi from Absentia, like he just joined the core tech working group as well. Robin is on us because they got the Filecoin grants, and so even just learning about how to integrate all of these different technologies with Ocean, I think will be really valuable. And they actually, when I joined, they shared uh, like, I guess kind of like notes from their last few meetings, um, like, like Google Docs. And I guess they, they brainstormed on a lot of different stuff for like what might be next for Ocean. And like some of those are like about making uh, tools that, that make it easier for data scientists, for example. And so what I might do, I think it would be really useful for, for you to read that, for example, and have a look at it. Um, so I might ask like, if we can share that within our team without like you needing to join the yeah. uh, core tech working group. I think it's a really valuable document. And yeah, I, I guess just like being at the table at conversations like that to say what sort of tech Algevera needs uh, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing could be, could be useful. So I think it's going to be an interesting working group. Yeah, that's great. That's great. I think. Um, like, you know, uh, seeing where uh, Ocean is, Ocean's roadmap is would also like allow us to cater for um, features or roadmap for us down the line as well. So that's great, I think. Um, is there any other business on updates that happened last week? Um, I guess we had our usual pods um, um, and uh, we had the conversation um, there on tokenomics and uh, fundraising and uh, create track. Um, so it leads us actually nicely into the plans. So that we discussed in, in the create track that 
Um, we wanted to have a simple enough template for people to propose projects, and we can use like something like Discourse as a as a medium for people to uh, post uh, their uh, their project proposals, essentially, right? Um, so I think it would be great to have set up the um, set up the discourse uh, for for Algovera this week, because um, we kind of know the know the template for the project proposals now. Um, all that's needed is like um, the discourse to pro propose the project, and then we need some sort of voting mechanism as well to vote on the projects. Um, and then we also would need um, the distribution of the compensation, but that comes before or that comes after and after the discourse on the uh, voting mechanism. So first point of order is, is discourse. Um, so uh, that should be uh, handy enough, I think, to uh, set up and, uh, and integrate also with uh, SourceCred. So then we'll have all the three plugins that SourceCred comes out of the box with um, to sort of capture the value within, within, the, uh, within the Algovera ecosystem. So we should have all, the, all that set up by end of, end of next week. Um, yeah, just on that as well. Um, I, like I was looking into the developer DAO stuff over the yeah. weekend. It's really interesting use case and like how they propose things on discourse and stuff would be really interesting to look at. Um, even yeah, I, I actually like when you sent in information uh, and even their Notion wiki is, is really, really great. Um, I want to dig into their ecosystem and uh, find out how, 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 the, how they do um all, all the operations of, of that that DAO be good like what they're providing as an organization is very similar to us just that they're mm. targeted at blockchain developers and we want to be targeted at DAO scientists and so um i think their model could be like really really similar um, mm. and like you said yeah the docs are great the way that they seem to use discourse is really interesting they have those ideas about the po apps and stuff and so uh there's a huge amount of lessons to learn there i would say mm. um, I, like I can actually, I have an NFT, so I could join. I just noticed recently I can't see their Discord anymore because I need to like validate that I have an NFT or something like that. Right. So, Is um, that how they um? Do they have a some sort of an access control for Discord? Something like that. Yeah. Uh, okay, so anyone can join the Discord and see. Not anymore. Uh, right. But like I have the NFT, so we can join and see see what it looks like. Ah, uh, I see. And. I don't think I don't think they're taking memberships anymore either. They've actually closed it. They have. Oh, uh, so is it, is it like a closed DAO? I guess. Like, like a membership kind of model. Anyone with the NFT, basically, and so I think they'll probably open up new memberships at some point. But maybe they just have enough people for what they're calling like season zero or whatever. Oh, I see. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, be worthwhile looking into them. Um, and like Raid Guild is another example to look at, look into um the, for like inspiration i think yeah um uh, it's like we have like a, a list of about 10 different groups that we want to try and inter integrate ourselves with more but like yeah. just don't have the bandwidth at the moment so i think it's yeah. just going to be a numbers thing yeah um yeah uh, yeah be worthwhile looking into that uh that uh DAO group and and like their their wiki is um is free for anyone to look into so that'll be a good place for me to start uh, uh digging up some information and uh, see how or how we can uh, learn from them. Um, yeah. Then number two is the on plans is, um, so I actually did um, like spin up a uh, a Moloch DAO, well like uh, through DAO House. Um, it's not very intuitive actually. Uh, I, I I've 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 set up a DAO using Argon and using DAO House, and I think Argon is much more user friendly. Um, and like I, when I was setting it up um, last week, I was using like testnet as well, so that I didn't have to burn any uh, any uh, tokens, um, um, any like real money. So um, again, like I wasn't really sure like how the um, you know if we wanted to have a token for like the DAO, I wasn't really sure how how that would work. You know, do we have to recreate our our own uh, contract or? Can you like mint um, tokens itself? Um, it wasn't very intuitive, I guess. Um, and there isn't a lot, awful lot online either in terms of like tutorials. Um, and the documentation is okay, I guess. Um, so like I've, I've been testing out DAO House, but I, I think I'm gonna try out a different um, 
uh, other frameworks like uh, Colony. I don't even know if Colony is actually um, still um, open access for everyone or if, if it's still in beta. Um, and I want to also check out Aragon um, and some of the other DAO stacks. Boardroom. I feel like uh, on, on I think Boardroom though is like it's it's like more of a front end analytics for DAO rather than like spinning up a DAO framework itself. Um, so like uh, maybe Argon is the is the most in intuitive uh, framework for us to start with. Um, I'll, I'll look into Argon again, see if we they have like the option to mint our own tokens for essentially like a, a, a use case within within the DAO. Um, I wasn't too happy with DAO House. Essentially, is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, again, like I'll 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 do a bit more work on on this this week um there's some uh, less there were some videos from colonel that went through like setting up a dare house and stuff I wonder right. if we could find the recordings from them yeah we even reach out to who was that'd be good stuff. um yeah where, where did you come across that there was a like guild for build guild it was a guild for like Zodiac, basically. Like oh yeah, Dao Zodiac Dao. and Dao Guild. Yeah, they, okay. They okay. used like Dao House, and they actually ran through the process of setting it up and stuff. Mm. So I wonder, like, if there was a channel in Kernel for that guild, maybe that would be a good place to start asking questions about like minting tokens and stuff. Yeah, that's true. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I'll, I'll work on that anyway. I want to by the end of this week figured out what is our structure for like the generative art group in terms of um, the governance framework for it. Um, so yeah, hopefully by the end of this week, I'll have figured out that. Um, and then, uh, you know, we can, as we're getting closer and closer to finishing up the hiking sessions, uh, we can implement that yeah. uh, framework. Um, Just on that note, I noticed in our uh, proposal for Ocean. We said we'd interview two artists. Right. And so um, I was thinking one of those could be Hobby, just to mm -hmm. chat about, you know, all the considerations with moving a generative model onto Ocean. I think that would be a really interesting discussion anyway, even mm -hmm. outside of the deliverables. And also I was thinking of chatting to that guy from, was it Sparta? You know, the one that was related to like a Vortex uh, NFT. Um, he dropped into our Discord recently. Right, right. I tried. To, I actually already tried to reach out to him, but he has like private messages turned off. So okay. I'm just going to reach out to him through our Discord ah, tag him and see if he gets back. But uh, two isn't a huge number anyway. Like, yeah. Uh, and I think it would be an interesting thing to start. Um, and even another option I'm just thinking is that Ben from Colonel. He remember he was asking about the profile pictures getting made for the art there that he was in. Yes. So maybe. We could reach out to him and he could get us in touch with someone there or something like that. Mm. Yeah, that'll be that'll be interesting. Um conversation to have anyway. Um so yeah, we can essentially uh try and get that uh conversation set up for this week as well, maybe. Um then number three is preparing for the grant applications. So it's kind of leading into like the ocean proposals, uh, ocean oceans. Uh, 12th round, I think it is, uh, of funding. Um, we'll, uh, we'll need to start looking into the application there, uh, what deliverables we want uh, to meet. I think we have um, a good chunk of the last deliverables met anyway. Um, so I think, uh, I think it should be fine. We just need to come up with our plan for the next proposal. Um, then we also th are thinking about maybe uh, applying for Filecoin or I don't know if Sia was it Sia or um that have um I, I don't know if they have also a um a grant um I don't know yeah grant um sort of uh application process but Filecoin definitely do um or maybe we can look into the Filecoin grants for this week as well whether uh on any sort of distributed or um decentralized storage um organizations. Um, look up which one is uh, which one is the most ideal for us, and then also if they provide a grant, then that's also great because if we want to integrate it uh, with what we're building. 
Um, but Ocean, Ocean's uh, proposal definitely has to be something we'll need to look at for this week. Because I think that's next week or the week after the deadline for it. I think next week, probably, yeah. Okay, so yeah, probably should um, should start preparing for that. Now we have hacking session number six for this week. Do you have an idea of what you're going to do for this week? Um, yeah, I think we will run the computer data. So there's like one of the issues is that the computer data flow, if you do the exact same as the README in the OceanPy documents, they just use like a toy example of plotting some 3D function and everything works except for getting the results back. So I reached out to the Ocean uh, dev support and uh, they're not being that helpful uh, really, but uh, I think maybe it's the case of, so like the algorithm is sent off and it says it's running and then it says it's like job finished, everything went well. And then you're supposed to be able to retrieve the results that it returned and it gives like a 404 error. And um, I think it might be related to the time when you try to retrieve the results. I think you might have to like run the next cell in the notebook at the exact right time to retrieve the results or something like that. But obviously that's not ideal either. Um, Cause if you, if you run it too early, like you would in a Python file, then the results won't be ready. And so like a notebook should be even better than a Python file because you can kind of keep running it or whatever. Uh, but for some reason it's not working. And yeah, what I can do is I can reach out to um, like Empowered maybe to see if they have the same issue because, or like maybe even Robin, just, I think I already asked Robin, he didn't have the same issue, but basically if we want to get the results back from training our, uh, our generative model, that has to work and it doesn't okay. seem to be at the moment. Um, but what we can do for next week is basically the exact same as the C2D flow in the readme, except we'll use our own algorithm, which is going to be stored in the GitHub repo as a Python file. And so, We'll basically do the exact same training that we did locally, but do it using computer data. And then okay. hopefully like visualize the same results. And that that will kind of wrap up the first series of hacking sessions, I'd say, once we manage to do that. And then that kind of ties in nicely with the next round of ocean grants. Cause like we were talking about earlier, maybe the next step is to turn that generative model into some sort of web app where people mm -hmm. can you know, explore uh, the different images created by the generative model and maybe even like mint one uh, as an NFT or something like that. And so that's what I'm currently thinking for the next Ocean proposal. Um, cool. Basically try to monetize that model or a similar model, uh, generative art model. Yeah, sounds good. Um, sounds good. So you think maybe um, to wrap up the project, maybe one or two more sessions? I'd say like max two, yeah. Okay, cool. That's great. Um, and then we're chatting about a uh, DeFi hacking session. Um, will that be going ahead this week? Um, Christian and Greg are, were sort of um, contributing on that project, uh, pro sort of hacking session, um, leading that one. Yeah, I was just thinking I must reach out and organize a time that suits both of them. And then I think, yeah, we'll go ahead with that this week. Okay, great, great, great. So like we're, um, we'll always have some sort of hacking session on. Um, you know, once once the DeFi hacking session finishes up, we'll probably introduce the next one, maybe the uh, healthcare one. I think there's a like, quite a bit of activity going on in the healthcare uh, channel, so maybe it'd be good to like open up that um, hacking session, possibly after or halfway through the DeFi one. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, and that um, kind of that will tie in because I think the plan was for Alonzo to an insight to apply for a second grant uh, promotion, and so we were saying that they need some data scientists to work on their medical data, for example. And so maybe they would put up bounties for data scientists to create algorithms. And so we'll know whether that was successful, uh, I guess like next week. And if successful, maybe that's when we can start to put up the bounties for the data scientists and start some hacking sessions for that. Yeah. Um, and then talking about bounties. Um, so there is actually like the bounty for, or you can call it a prize for the hackathon essentially or whatever. Um, for the hacking sessions, this is like sort of third party or um, people that we're collaborating with um, putting up the prize money. Uh, and then there, like we were chatting about, like maybe there is a bite sized task that within people within our community can uh, earn bounties for. Um, and I think that's a good way of like getting, um, like sort of rewarding contributors and getting them more involved in the community. Um, so, 
I, I actually looked into Gitcoin bounties. Setting it up isn't uh, too hard of a process. Um, the only thing I think we need is like a, a wallet that contains the, the currency, cryptocurrency that we'll be paying them in. So I think most people, you know, if, if, if people are looking at, say, Gitcoin and they're looking at the different bounties, uh, you probably would want the cryptocurrency to be in like uh, some sort of stable coin, like uh, either USDC or um, XDAI or, or something like that. Um, so maybe we'll need to have like a separate wallet that has that cryptocurrency um, tied to it. And then we just set up the uh, bounty uh, in Gitcoin and you link the, you link the GitHub issue to the Gitcoin page. And then that's how you <coughs> set up the bounty. So there's a couple of things to be done in there, but I'm hoping to test out a trial one this week, uh, set up a bounty for uh, doing the blog post for um, uh, for the hacking sessions that we, we've been doing. So that'll be a good way to start, um, uh, test out the bounties. And maybe we can even open a channel in the Discord for like just bounties. Um, so people can come and look at possible bounties that are um, on right now. That all sounds great. Yeah, I really like the idea of that. Um, yeah. And just on Gitcoin as well, I think their new their next funding round or like fundraising happens in less than a week or something like that. Right. So do you think we should go for why not? I think so, because um, I think... Um, uh, one word sort of in the kernel ecosystem. So that'll be uh, great um, to show um, like, a, you know, we're an active project in the Gitcoin ecosystem. Um, and then two, like, I think it'll also open up exposure to Algovera. People might discover Algovera through Gitcoin projects and they can uh, join the community that way. And, you know, if we, even if we don't get a lot of a lot of funding uh, from Gitcoin itself, uh, it might regardless be great for discovering uh, Algevera, uh, like, you know, Gitcoin members who are um, searching on, searching different projects, they might find it interesting and uh, might be a good way for Algevera to be discovered. Exactly, yeah. And I think like Gitcoin is probably something that you need to like build up. Like it's like setting up a Twitter profile. Like you're not going to get much the first month, but hopefully yeah. you start to like gain traction over time and stuff. So it'd be good to start putting in that effort and yeah, I completely agree. Like, who knows? People could find the community through Gitcoin and join our yeah. Discord and stuff. Even if that's the case, it's uh, it's worth doing it just for that. So I'll try and do that today just because I know it takes them a while to approve. So okay. just to maximize our amount of time yeah. in, the, in the round, uh, I'll try and do that either today or tomorrow. And hopefully that gets approved like within the first few days of it opening. And then yeah, we can join those collections. We'll be in the kernel collection and the ocean collection. So yeah. that should like attract more uh, visibility and stuff. And uh -huh. who knows, we could like raise a few thousand or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that could in itself like sort of um, be the be the fund to fund uh, bounties on Gitcoin. So it becomes a self-sustaining model where, you know, the funding from Gitcoin Will allow us to fund bounties on Gitcoin. Um, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, and we can point to that. We can even use that as our main proposal. You know, like setting up bounties for data scientists on Gitcoin or something like that. Yeah, I think that'd be good. Um, so the la well, last point on the plan is the Junto. So I think Kernel has wrapped up. So um, Juntos might be. Um, a, a good uh, way of uh, exploring conversation within the community that's recorded. Um, or uh, we can change that event to something else, uh, depending on like what, what you think. Um, so what's your thoughts on, on the Junto uh, after, after Kernel's finished up? Yeah, I really liked the Juntos, uh, but I think it, it's a logical point to wrap them up, I think. Mm. And as good as the conversations were, I'm not sure how many people it's it has attracted to the community to stay and so mm -hmm. um i wish there was more interest there and things like I, I wish we were able to get more non-technical people into algovera and um, we have been mm -hmm. trying but uh this doesn't seem to be doing the trick and so 
um, yeah, I'd be happy to like adapt it to something else or even just do it kind of ad hoc as we uh, think of things that we could do. Like for example, I've been keeping in touch with this guy who reached out through Kernel. He's working for like Mozilla in like the AI ethics type group. And mm -hmm. he wants to use like decentralized AI as a case study for ethics, which I think would be amazing. Like if we could mm -hmm. get people who actually know what they're talking about in AI ethics, talking about decentralized AI. Um, yeah. So like just use, yeah, use it ad hoc. Like, so if a conversation comes up with Mozilla, for example, maybe we could turn that into a junto around AI ethics and things like that. But I don't think we need to do one every week um, no. just for the sake of it. Uh, one thing that I was thinking maybe we could do is like um, maybe instead of having it once a week, we can have once a month and we can use maybe something like uh, Gather Town to um, uh, hold sort of like a virtual event um, of me meeting up uh, with the community essentially. So once a month, uh, this Gather Town meetup happens and people can um, essentially like come together and uh, meet other people in the community. Oh, that's uh, an optimistic view of how people would come together and uh, meet one another, but it's an opportunity for people to network within the community and build more uh, more of a relationship within the, the community. Um, and I, th I think what, uh, what Gather Town allows you to do is like you can either have group conversations and or you can have, um, you can have sort of one-to-one -one conversations that are private so I think uh, be ha being able to like have a mix of that is it would be uh, would be great for some sort of a community event. Um, and uh, there's probably quite a bit of prep uh, in, in order to like set up the gather town and set up the map for the gather town and also um, let the community know that like this is happening. This is what we're planning. Um, so I think once a month or in and around that might be a good way of like trying to get maybe uh 10 20 people together and um you know that could be like contributors it could be like just passive or members that want to just meet other people um i think it'll be a good way of um of turning those conversations into a more of a networking meeting other people type of conversation yeah i like that yeah definitely and something that we could combine it with or like just more sessions like the one with trent i suppose yeah. Like if we could start to, and Jakob actually mentioned this as well as an idea, he was like, what if we could start to try and get in speakers to talk about decentralized AI uh, more regularly? And like, yeah, so like those were really interesting juntos, the decentralized AI ones. So maybe we just keep those ones up and try and get like thinkers in the space in to start exploring. And maybe you do an hour with the speaker and then you do gather town after. For exactly like, what I was thinking, I think. An hour or something like that. I think that's that, that, that combination is a great combination because um, speakers will attract the crowd, and then once the crowd is there, we can utilize our crowd to set up Gather Town and like let one of people meet one another. Um, and because uh, like because of the speaker and the topic, um, there will be a common interest um, of uh, people that are that are attending the session. You know, there'll be something that people uh, will uh, be interested in or. Um, you know, it'll be a common interest there. So I think that's a great way of doing it. If we try and get like a speaker in every month. I think that's a brilliant way of like getting people together. And then you, we should definitely try and utilize something like Gather Town or, or Airme to um, enable more connections to form within the community. Um, yeah, I completely agree. And like my only worry is that it might be difficult to get speakers. I can't, like no one springs to mind immediately as someone who would have a good chance of coming. Like, yeah. Uh, Jakob mentioned Andrew Trask of Open Mind. Open Mind, yeah. Like that would be amazing, but I'm also not sure if he would come and speak. Uh, maybe yeah. we're not well known enough yet. But maybe like if we can get like explore through common uh, like contacts. So for example, yeah. if Colonel could help us to arrange an event, I'm sure that would they'd be more likely to speak if someone like Andy asked them to or something. And so yeah, like maybe we can explore. You know, who knows who is in the decentralized AI space or close to the decentralized AI space that mm -hmm. um, is in kernel or maybe like someone Trent can introduce us to and um, maybe that's a way to go about it. But I mean, the worst that happens is we just don't get any speakers and we don't hold the events. Yeah. You know? So yeah. I think it's definitely worth trying and it would help develop, develop our understanding um, to build our reputation as like thinkers in the decentralized AI mm -hmm. space and 
that space doesn't really exist. There's no real community around the mm -hmm. decentralized AI space. So if we can start to hold events through that, I think that would be fantastic. Yeah, and it'll also be a great learning opportunity, right? Where like these speakers come in and um, they do provide some information or new perspective. It's also valuable for us as a community to learn from, from those speakers. Um, so we, we'll, we'll start the planning on that actually this week and see like uh, what's viable, who, who we can prepare and uh, looking into like uh, testing out the Gather Town or Air Meet. Yeah. Um, just thinking Vienna might be able to help us out. Yeah. As well. So yeah, we, ask her. we can we can definitely utilize our community. Like maybe we can even put it into the chat. Does anybody know any good speakers that they could get in touch with um, for looking like, you know, at what we're thinking of holding this event? And um, does anybody have any suggestions? And we can like uh, skim through the suggestions and pick out the one we think is um, would be real value. And then we'll have like a, also like a, a backlog of um, of speakers that we can always contact for the next next month's events um yeah exactly and i think even like um talking to like vladimir for example i think that would be a really interesting event like mm. he he seems to like have quite a big following in the machine learning space and stuff and so mm. we could even explore his idea for you know their ai day and how it yeah. differs to algevera and stuff like that i think that would be that'd be a really interesting way to get different people in the room together as well so yeah that could be really valuable yeah, yeah, I think collaborations uh, could be uh, great again here for speakers. And, you know, although we have a small enough community, we can always like um, collaborate with other community and like um, uh, and try and like utilize collaboration more in that, in that sense um, of, you know, bringing new ideas and, uh, and, and um, people um, like with, you know, that the community might be uh, completely different uh, uh like the two communities might be completely different in terms of like the objectives and goals so like bringing those ideas together might be a really um interesting way and something like uh holding an event and uh, sort of an after session where um people can meet each other i think it's a it's like a great way of of um doing that i think it's fantastic yeah like you said just bringing different communities together and like if it doesn't work it doesn't work but like i think it's an interesting experiment that would yeah. provide a lot of value if we did. I'm like, I think we could at least keep it going for a few months. Mm -hmm. like, I'm sure, I'm sure Vladimir would be happy to do it, for example, and talk yeah. about his project, you know, so that's like one month and then, yeah, we can just reach out to a few others and maybe, maybe we manage us or maybe we just do it ad hoc as we get speakers as well, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think like you know, uh, putting a rough um, sort of frequency to it, I think once a month is actually pretty doable. Um, yeah, as soon as um, as soon as we we do one and figure out how to like get the technology up and running, it's just a matter of finding finding speakers and marketing the talk. Um, so I think I actually think once a month isn't too hard. Um, so yeah, I think it's de definitely doable. Yeah. And even like I'm just thinking Alethia AI as well. Like I think Robin knows the main guy there, I'm, and like I think Robin's been trying to speak to him for quite a while. Yeah, and he's been too, he's been very busy, but. If we organized an event around it and said we were going to get like, you know, quite a few data scientists uh, mm -hmm. to attend or something like that, I think maybe, and then Robin would be there as well, and we could, like, maybe maybe something like that would work for him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, yeah, we can we can start the planning on that. Um, source the speakers and get the technology up and running. Market it. It's essential aspects of it. Yeah, um, great idea. Yeah, <coughs> yeah that's. That's it. Is there any other things you wanted to mention for this week? I don't think so. Okay, okay. basically wraps up the town hall for this week. Yeah, uh, good time. Yeah, it's a uh, longer one than last time. Yeah. Um, still just me and you. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I think uh, good to like just get up to speed with everything. Um, and this is exactly what the town hall is for. Like, just review last week's uh, work, uh, plan for this week's work, have sort of a general uh, idea of like what happened, any feedback on what happened last week, um, plan of what we want to do for this week, and kind of sets the priority as well. Uh, so I think it's it's good. Um, we're going to be after, like doing this anyway, regardless. So um, it's good that the community also knows that uh, this is what, what we're thinking and what we're doing. 
exactly yeah. yeah like it's good that we me and you do this and then if other people want to join great yeah exactly i think even compared to like some some groups would only have a town hall and so you're likely to get more numbers but we actually run mm. quite a few events each week and so if you're yeah. going to miss one it's probably the town hall right yeah, yeah i think so i think like people are more interested in hiking sessions um than um, than sorry the uh, town halls because it's more operational sides thing of the of the organization rather than core meeting value provided uh, by the community um, what would be cool actually would be something like the ocean day town hall where projects come in and give an update on how the project is going and so mm -hmm. you know when we have a few different people who we funded grants with or some people who are working with like our partners like data union and stuff maybe we could ask like a member of each team to come and give an update on on their parts and stuff and uh, that could be interesting i think uh yeah that that'll be uh, when we when we're at a stage and we, when we have multiple squads working on different projects it might be great for the community to know what the squads are working on in their progress and so uh, town halls might take a different shape and form and um or maybe it's it's a completely different event like event or uh, session than town halls itself um but yeah i think essentially a way of like giving progress back to the community is a uh, is a good thing when we're at that stage. I don't think we're at that stage now where we have like multiple projects running. We have like these hacking sessions that are essentially pseudo pseudo groups and um, squads that are building projects. But when we get to that stage, I think we yeah, should do something similar like that. Yeah, perfect. Okay, we'll wrap it up there.